everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining me again today for our a May webinar. I can't believe it's almost the end of May already. Um, today we are going to be working primarily with Smart Photo Editor, which is a it's a cute little program um, that I learned about a few years ago from Mike Motes. If you guys are familiar with him, he's a macro photographer. Um, that's pretty much all he uses to edit his programs with. He's not a big Photoshop user and he loves this program and I checked it out. And I'm gonna show you real quick what the screen looks like or the website, I should say. Let's bring this over here. Um, so at the end, I, I posted it in the chat box, um, but you, I also have a code that you can save 15% um, off the, the program um, with Meredith Images 3, no spaces in there. So this is their website and there are they have several um, products. They have Portrait Pro, which if you're a portrait user is great. I have one of the older versions. I haven't upgraded because I really don't do very much portraits. Um, and I haven't checked out the Landscape Pro yet. But Smart Photo Editor, if you go into, let's go to the Buy Now screen, um, you'll get this screen. There are two versions of it that you can purchase. Um, for years and years, and from when they started it, whenever, however many years ago that was, until uh, just a few months ago, it was always run as a standalone program. You could not export from Photoshop. However, they just added a new version that lets you use it as a Photoshop plugin. Um, so the, the basic um, Smart Photo Editor Studio is, I'm sorry, the Studio is the plugin one, is $49.95. The standalone version is $29.95. Um, I personally love having it as a plugin because you know I love working on layers and you're going to see how I work with it today. Um, and I'll do one example as a standalone and then you're going to see why I like it so much more now that it's um, also available as a plugin. So I did do the upgrade when it came out, I think it was, I don't know, maybe two or three months ago. And, um, and then I found they have an affiliate program now. So I did join that and that's why I have a discount code for you guys. Um, so let's get rolling because I got lots of cool stuff I want to show you and you can also if you have the old version like I did um, and you want to upgrade to the uh, plug-in version they also have that option in there so you don't have to rebuy the whole program you can do the the upgrade is $24.95 um, alrighty so let's close this guy and I'm going to open my first image and in this case, this first one, this is a raw file. I just opened it and saved it as a TIFF just to make it simpler for the presentation, but I've done nothing to this file. This is straight out of camera. Um, I'm gonna show you how to edit it in Smart Photo Editor. And then I'm also gonna show you the camera raw filter. Um, and I love Smart Photo Editor, but I don't think it would be my primary full editing program just because I like the flexibility of either, you know, using Lightroom or the Camera Raw Filter or even Luminar has been kind of my go-to lately for my basic editing. Um, so yes, um, I just saw Virginia popped in. I did share the discount and I will again at the end, but it's Meredith Images 3 the number three with no spaces um, and that's to use on their website. But I'll show you guys that again when we get done. And also Dave wanted me to remind you that we are going to randomly with a, a number generator, he's going to have it pick two names um, to win free entries to our June uh, creative photography conference, the virtual one. Um, so stay tuned and uh, we will do that at the end of the presentation as well. Alrighty, so for this one, I'm gonna first duplicate my background layer like I always do, because I like everything on separate layers. Um, and I'm gonna go in um, as a plugin. So I'm gonna go to my filter menu and Anthropics is the company that makes Smart Photo Editor. 
So then I can come over and just choose that just like you would any other, you know, Topaz, Luminar, any of those kind of things. And a lot of times I've noticed when you bring in the photo, it comes in small. So if you just hover over this pan and zoom and then click on fit, it will make it the size of your screen so you can actually see what you're doing. Um, so first we're going to work on just a basic edit. So you would come over on the right hand side to image treatment. And that will open up when you click that opens up your your basic sliders that you would get in most any editing program. So for this particular image, and I'm just, you know, as usual, your the sliders are going to be different for every photo. Um, and I'm just going to make some changes here. I'm going to bring down the brightness a little bit. And the highlights I brought all the way down because I want to try and pull some more detail back into the sky. Shadows I opened up all the way. And then I went back up to lights and brought those down to about there. And darks I brought up a little bit. And blacks. I also upped a little bit, uh, 0.051 up there. And then I came down to the contrast section and did contrast, a little bit more contrast and a little bit of clarity. And 1.39 and a little bit of vibrance. and a little bit, just a touch of saturation. All right, so that's kind of a, a decent basic um, edit. And then from here, you can, if you click on more sliders, it will expand some of these sections. So it also gives you color preserving. And then if you come down, you can get into like hue saturation and luminance, they call it vibrance. Um, for all of your colors. So I did make a couple changes here. Um, the oranges, I up the vibrance just a hair. And the greens, just a teeny bit. Okay, so that it would be our basic edit. So since I came in from Photoshop, the way you get back to Photoshop is you go up to your file, save, oops, save and return. And that's going to render it back <clears throat> and take you back into Photoshop. And there you have it. So there is the original image and that's the processed image. But now I want to show you the difference between processing it there and then I'm going to use the camera raw filter. <clears throat> so I'm going to turn that layer off and I'm going to reduplicate my background layer. And I'll mark this one Smart Photo Editor so we remember what we did. So we're going to go back to this one and go into filter, camera raw filter. And this is the same as if you brought it in, you know, as the raw image to Photoshop and it would automatically open this, or you could do the same thing in Lightroom as well. Um, so under our basic, I'm going to take the exposure up just a hair, a little bit of contrast, highlights I brought down quite a bit. And you can see I'm already pulling in more detail up here than I did in the other program. Shadows. I think the other one would do better with a JPEG file than it does with a RAW file. Um, I, like I said, I haven't tried it a ton, um, but I did try a few different things for um, this program. Now the thing is too, when you do the whites and blacks, it's just like in Lightroom. If you hold down the Alt or Option key on a Mac, when you click on here to set your white point or black point, you see how when I move it over, you start seeing some colors. You want to just start seeing a few dots of color. In the whites, it'll be like that. And in blacks, we're going to go that way. So there's just a little bit of yellow showing there in the middle. And that will usually set your black and white point. Sometimes if you have an extremely bright area, it can kind of get fooled. 
by that. So you also have to take a look at what you're doing and not just go by the sliders. Yes, I will show how to make that the screen bigger when we get back into the program. Thank you, dear. Um, D. Hayes and a little bit of vibrance. And then I went back to the blacks and I readjusted that and upped it a little just because I thought it looked better. So we'll say, okay. So now, give that a second. So that's our camera raw filter. And I'll turn this one back on and that's the version with the Smart Photo Editor. So you can see I was able to pull a little more detail from the raw image with the camera raw filter. So we're gonna go ahead and use that one. And I'm not saying that the Smart Photo Editor is not good at editing. I just think with a raw file, it tends to work better with other programs, but I love it for the creative aspects, which is what we're gonna really get into right now. So I'm gonna use this layer and I'm gonna duplicate that. Um, because this program does not make a separate layer, like most of them don't. Nick is the only one that does, um, that I'm aware of. And um, so I'm going to go back into our Smart Photo Editor. And I did make a couple tweaks to things. So again, when you come in, if the image is too small, just hover up here in the left over Pan and Zoom, and then click on Fit and that will fit it to your screen so you can see it much better. Um, I did come down to, oh, so this is a good point. So when you come back into an image um, that you've, you've been working or something, if you keep opening the, the program, it's remembered the last settings I did, but I don't wanna use those settings. So I'm gonna just, the second one is my, there's my original image and there is the edited image. I'm just going to X that one out because this original is now what I just brought in from Photoshop. Okay. And then we're going to go back to image treatment. I'm going to tweak just a tiny bit. I decided to bring down the highlights even just a little bit more. And I could have probably done this back over and camera raw, but sometimes, you know, combination of things never hurts. And then I brought the lights down just a teeny bit as well. There, all right. And then under contrast, I did tweak the clarity just a little bit more. All right, so that's there. And then I did come down to the colors and under cyan, I'm going to try to pop the sky a little bit more. So under cyan's, I up the vibrance just a little. And you can also type numbers if you should happen to know them. Obviously, you're not going to know those first time around. But if I wanted to type those in, I could at this point. And then the blues. I did a little bit of vibrance and a little less brightness. About there. All right, so now for the fun stuff. So now we've got <clears throat> our image, whoops, tweaked. You can also zoom in just by clicking on the image in case you were wondering what I was doing. Um, Oh, somebody said that my picture is in the way of the screen. You can move that around. That's I don't control that. Um, that's your end of Zoom. There should be, if my photo is in the way, you can click the top of it and just drag it. You might even be able to close it. Um, but that's, yeah, th there is a vertical bar next to the menu that will move the photo over farther so that it gets smaller. Um, can you see before and after? Well, you yes, you could because I could click back here would be my original and there is the edited. So you can do that with these two here at the top, just even hovering over it. So that's the before and the after. And if you don't like the after, you could just delete it and start over and still have your original here. Thank you. Okay, um, so now we're gonna get into the effects. So to get to all of the cool stuff, 
you're going to click on this effects gallery button. And the neat thing about this program is pretty much all of these effects are created by users. So you can create effects yourself and share them as a public setting. Um, and there are people who are constantly updating. So when you close the program, like the first time you use it for the day, when you exit out of it, it's going to um, update any new presets that have been added since the last time you closed it. So it, it's constantly getting new things in here, which is really cool. Um, OK, so for this one, I'm going to type them in to make it quicker because Finding them again is sometimes difficult because there's so many pages. You can see when you open the whole thing, there are 680 pages with 12 on a page of presets. Um, you can obviously narrow them down, and that right now it's on all effects. I do have a group that I've saved as favorites over the last um, year or two that I've been using this. Um, you can go into artistic or any of the other categories and then you can narrow it down by styles and if you hover you can see there are different categories here um, if you wanted to add detail or like an HDR effect if you want to work with colors um, you know vintage retro of course you know those are some of my favorites you can add borders um, you can create different moods based on seasons or types of weather. So you can choose any kind of category. And you can also say if I want um, to choose something that's best for a portrait or a landscape or a seascape, or you can let it analyze this image as well. Um, so I'm going to type in this little search bar since I've written down the presets that I've used just to make it faster. Um, oops, it's not. There we go, oil, paint, texture one by, and, and I have to make sure that I type it exactly. Yep, that's the one. Um, and this one is by someone called Old and Done. <laughs> and I just liked the the look of this one. I was looking in the oil oils category. and And then once you've selected something you like, you click this OK that will pop up, and that will open up the full controls for this image. This is what is making up that preset. Um, so just like in Topaz or a, a template in Luminar, you can always tweak the look. You're not just resigned to the look the way it is. So the vibrance I took up to one, and the saturation. They had it kind of low. I brought it back a little bit more. I want, didn't want this one quite that washed out. And I left it there. And then we're going to do a file, save and return. And then I'll show you quickly what you would do if you're in the standalone as well. So that is our finished effect. And then once you come back here, and I'm going to do this with several of the other effects, you can always lower the uh, opacity of that layer if you want to lessen that effect, which is another reason I like having these on a separate layer. So if I wanted the oil effect and maybe not have it be quite so strong, you can then lower that opacity. So let's do one really quick as a standalone got a million things open. Um, so this is the standalone version. And I'm going to do, I'll do the next one with this. So I'm going to, um, because I work with two monitors, as you know, I typically do. Um, I'm just dragging my image from the other screen and dropping it here. Otherwise, you would just go file open like a typical um, image. I did already process this with Luminar to kind of tone down the background and stuff. Um, and when I go take it into Photoshop, I can show you the layers that it has. So for this one, I'm going to type in my effects gallery. <clears throat> now it's thinking. There we go. Um, and I'm going to type in montage. And sometimes there are multiple things that have that same name. 
Um, this is the one that I wanted for this image. So I'm going to click on that and then click that OK to open up the full panel. And I made just a couple tweaks to this one. I thought it was kind of a cool effect. The one thing that I found, if you're changing the sizes of these boxes, you need to do it by grabbing the lower right control point. Um, when I tried it from the left side, it actually starts shifting the image. And it did like some really weird stuff. So let's reset that. And I wanted to just make this box a little bit wider. And then I made this box also just a little bit wider. Just kind of, I like the way it brought in the rest of that leaf there. And then I thought the, the white um, area, which they call the padding, was a little large on a couple of these, larger than on the others. Um, so I'm going to, I found that second up from the bottom was the one around that largest box. So I'm going to type in my number. Oops. 3.10. And then the other one was third up from the bottom. And I made that one 22.62. And that was just tweaking a couple of those to even them out. So because I'm in the standalone version now, to save this, I would go file. And you can save it as a session to come back to it, but then you can save it as either a JPEG, TIFF, or a PNG. Um, I want it to be uncompressed. I want the same size that it already is. And it will default back to the original folder that you brought it in from. So once you say OK, it's going to show you this is the folder I brought it from. And it adds an underscore PE at the end of the name. So you know that's the one that just came from Smart Photo Editor. And then you would just say save. And that would bring that back to your file folder. And then you can just close out of the program or just um, close the image if you want to. And it would go back to the main screen. There are a lot of tutorials built into this product. Um, so definitely, if you're new to the product, do some exploring here. Of course, I like to just jump in and play <laughs> rather than, than uh, reading and watching things sometimes. Um, but if you want to you know, learn some more about it, there's definitely some great info here. <clears throat> so, And this is what I was talking about. When you first um, close it, um, it will show you the things that you've done so far. And then if, if I hadn't already today, close this, it would run a, an update and update the, the presets that are in there. All right, so let's go back to Photoshop and I'm gonna open up my original again because I'm gonna do a different effect on it as well. I like to play with different things and kind of see what I like better. So here's my layered file and that was the original image and that was with my Luminar edit. So I really brought out a lot more detail in here, kind of toned down that brightness. Um, I think that um, came out pretty cool. And I see, <laughs> yes, Kathy, I haven't gone in the community forum either. I, I just don't really have time sometimes. I just want to do what I want to do and move on. Um, so this is our layer we're now going to duplicate and then go back to Smart Photo Editor. <clears throat> And if I had done the previous one through this plugin as well, it would have that second image. I would just delete that. Um, we can go back up. And you don't have to click on that, just hover on it and then hit fit. Um, go back to our effects gallery. And this one is called jump back in time. And sometimes it will pop up there for you. So I was looking for like a vintagey look for this one. Um, so once you hit the, come on, give me the okay, there we go. Um, these circles and certain presets have different adjustments you can make like we did with the montage one. This will control the um, area of the effect that was created. You can see how it's kind of adding and deleting some, some of the uh, kind of grunge look in there. So you can always tweak a lot of these. Some don't have them, but some do. 
Um, so you'll see that as you go along as well. Um, so on here, I did a couple of adjustments. I adjusted the exposure. I brought that up a little bit. The highlight clipping there and highlight detail. Add a little bit more there. And then now this is going to be a good illustration of why I like doing it from Photoshop. So we're going to save and return. And again, because I think that's a little harsh, I like the look, but it's a little over the top. We can bring back that opacity. And then I'm also going to add a hue and saturation adjustment to that layer. So we're going to do hue and saturation. Now I only want that to affect the um, that copy layer, the one that we just brought in. So I can do a close that for a second. Um, Control Alt G, which would be Command Option G on a Mac. So I've grouped that adjustment to that layer because I did reduce that opacity. So that's why I didn't want it to adjust the hue and saturation of the other layers. And then I lowered the saturation to minus 35 or so. So now it's not that huge, you know, bright color that it had. And then I'm going to bring in one of my textures on top of this. Um, and I'm going to accept that. And this one, I'm going to change my blending mode to overlay and lower my opacity to about there. And then I didn't really want this texture on the flower itself, so I'll add a layer mask and take our soft round brush. And I have it at like 61% the brush. And I'm just going to take some of that texture off the flower itself. And of course, you would be much more careful than I'm doing. Just want to give you the idea for now. And that would take that. Um, texture that I just added off of that. And then I decided I wanted to add a border, which you can typically do by just adding a stroke to it, but a stroke would be on the inside of the, the photo and I didn't want to encroach on it at all. So I'm going to first make a merged layer of everything I've done so that I don't lose my layers, but it's not flattened. And I'm going to do that with a Control Alt Shift E, which would be Command Option Shift E on a Mac. And I always like to label it when I merge a layer, so I remember what I did. <clears throat> and under this layer, I want to add a transparent layer because I'm going to change the canvas size. So I can either hold my Control key and click the new layer button that will automatically put it underneath because normally a new layer adds above the active layer. Or you could just click the layer below and, and then select the new layer. Either way, it does the same thing. You just want the transparent layer under that. So I'm going to go to Image, Canvas Size. And I've checked off relative because I don't need to see the size. I want to tell it how much I want to add around the canvas. And I'm going to add a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here, which would be divided to each side. So I'd really be adding an eighth of an inch all the way around and say OK. <clears throat> and now you can see our excess canvas is now transparent. So I'm going to fill this layer with a color. And I'm going to do that. Um, and this is actually what I chose, but I started with something lighter and the color that I had picked was from within the image. I moved my cursor in and just selected colors. And the one I started with when I was doing this project was the FA683. And then to quickly fill a layer on a PC, it's Alt Backspace. On a Mac, it's Option Delete. And you can see I now have a 
a tan border there. And if I wanted to go a little bit darker, I could just click my foreground color picker again and click on a different color and then do my alt backspace again. And now we have a slightly darker border. I just thought I'd set it off nice and kind of gave it a nice finished image um, rather than just kind of fading away at the edges. It kind of constrained the whole thing. Um, somebody asked if I had talked at the beginning about the comparison between Topaz, Luminar, and Smart Photo Editor. I didn't um, because I like them all um, and I use them all depending on what I want to do to an image. Um, for me, doing this, this kind of work is a lot of experimentation and play. Um, I have been using Luminar more and more for my basic editing, even more so than Lightroom. I'll just bring an image into Photoshop and then launch Luminar from there. Um, Topaz, I still love for a lot of the creative things in there. The impression is one of my favorite things to do in there. Um, and there's tons of great presets and, you know, or looks as they call them. Um, so I do use both. It just kind of depends on what I think I want to do with an image. Um, it's just one more tool in my toolbox by having the smart photo editor. Um, so for this image, uh, Luminar AI or Luminar 4, I'm using Luminar AI and a secret. They're coming out with another update. Uh, I think they're going to launch it probably by the beginning of next week. They haven't given us a definitive date, but we had a um, webinar the other day. And if you already own Luminar AI, this is a free update. And they they just keep blowing everything else out of the water with the skies and the reflections have been refined and there's lots of good stuff coming. So stay tuned. It'll I'll have something in the blog on it on Thursday. That's the day we can release the info. Alrighty, so for this little guy, I love the image and I hated this little bar. I guess it's a perch or something here. So we're going to get rid of that first. So a trick that I like to use, um, and I'm sure you've seen me do this before, when you have a solid background like this, instead of trying to clone something, grab the smudge tool, the one that looks like the pointing finger, and just grab it and drag. And what you're doing is you're actually smudging the pixels, but because it's such a solid color, it works great on something like this. It's so much quicker and it gives you a better um, result. And this one, it's a little bit lighter here, so I'm going to actually even do that here. Just be careful when you get close to your subject, because if you get too close, you are actually distorting pixels. So you don't want to get too close to your actual subject but it's like quick and easy and so much easier to just get rid of things like that. Um, so from here, I'm going to reduplicate that just because that's what I like to do. So I, I, I would, for myself, I would relabel that smudge and I would remember what I did. And then this layer, we're now gonna go to our camera raw filter, I'm going to do some edit. And this is also a raw image. I'm going to jazz this up a bit. So we're going to do contrast. I'm going to do bring down the highlights just a hair. I didn't do a lot of major changes on this one. I really like this image a lot. Shadows brought those up just a smidge. The whites. We're going to get them nice and white. Uh, blacks I brought down just a couple. Texture. A little bit here, a little bit of clarity because we want to make all these feathers pop. And a touch of vibrance. Um, oh, somebody's saying the discount, they just renewed this one for me. Hmm, well, that's not a good thing. It should be, let me type it in the way I have it. I think maybe that could be it. It's Meredith Images with a cap M and a cap I. Yeah, they don't have that. So I think that's the way you need to put it in because they did just renew that. They do typically expire monthly with them, um, but I just had it renewed last week. 
So if you type it that way, you should be good. Alrighty. Um, so let's go back over here. Oops. And we'll say, okay. So that is our camera raw filter. So you can see there's our before. It just really made the feathers pop and the colors really pop nicely. So we'll duplicate that and we're going to go into our smart photo editor. And I don't know why it comes in small, but let me just refit it that way. Our effects gallery. And I'm going to type this one in for the possibilities. Oh, two, oh, there's a bunch of them. And that was the one I used. And this was under the, I think this was under the watercolor section. And I really love what I did for the background here. Um, and there is the effect on the bird. So if you didn't want the effect on the bird, you can mask in here as well. Um, if you just wanted it to be on the background. So if you click on mask area, you have a couple of ways that you can do that. Um, so I'm gonna use erase from selection and I'm gonna make my brush bigger. You can kind of see it there. And detector size kind of is like the hardness of the brush. And then I'm just going to brush where I don't want the effect. And you can see how it's bringing back some of the original color. Of course, I'm doing this much quicker than you would. Um, um, I, the coupon may not apply to the upgrade. It may only be on the new. Um, but I will double check it um, with them in the morning. I'll email them as soon as I get off the phone and um, or off the webinar, not off the phone, um, and see what's up because they said they were renewing it. So I will um, put it in the follow-up blog on Thursday. Or if you want to message me later, I will let you know as soon as I hear from them. Sorry about that. They said it was going to be good to go. Um, of course, I didn't try it. Yeah, this is Smart Photo Editor, not for Luminar. So, um, so anyway, once you have masked it, you if you want to see where you've masked it, you can you know do that with like a black and white. You can make sure that you've covered everything, um, and then this would go back here, and then we could return. And I actually liked it on the whole thing, but I wanted to show you the masking feature as well. Um, and if you, or the other thing, if you're doing it in Photoshop like this, you could also mask it when you got back here. So this is our smart photo editor layer. I could add the layer mask here and grab my brush and mask it here because we didn't do anything except add the effect. Um, so we could also do that as well. And that would let our original show through. So you could continue to, to mask it there. So either way, um, can double exposure and smart photo editor. I don't have that set up, Sylvia. I haven't tried that yet. So that's something I, that would be a good one I can do for a tutorial in the blog. Um, Probably not this week, but I will uh, definitely do that because um, I have not done a double of uh, exposure effect there. That's a good idea. Thank you. Um, so let me close that. And I see a couple people have typed in the Q&A box. Um, if you have a question on what we're doing, I think most of it was about the beginning getting set up. Could you type it in the chat box because the chat box um, gets saved with the webinar so I can go back and check for anything that I want to follow up with. I would appreciate it. Thank you. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. 
Okay, so this particular image, um, I have pre-edited. This was an HDR image. This was a three-shot HDR down at Old Car City in Georgia. Um, and I'm going to do a, three different effects on here to kind of show you some of the flexibility of there. What watercolor did I use on the bird? I used, it was Explore the Possibilities 020 was the one on that one. Um, and don't forget too, I also have the notes available for today's webinar um, with the images I used, um, the texture that I used on the flower. And because I didn't use a lot of textures today, I did throw in a bonus set of six textures that are not available anywhere else on my store. So they're very unique ones. So that alone is worth the five bucks for the notes and they're on sale until the end of next Tuesday, June 1st. Um, how do I get your blog? It is meredithimages.wordpress.com. And you can go there and sign up for the blog. Do all the textures have an opacity slider so we can de decide? Um, yes, they do. Um, so give me one second and I will show you that. Filter. So let's go in here, let's make this one bigger. So the first one that I'm going to do, we're going to go to the effects gallery. And this one was called Bits and Bobs 033. So we'll select that and say OK. And um, I'll have a link at the end for the notes as well, but that is also on my, let me type that in quick, meredithimages.com slash products will take you to my store and then just click on the category for webinar notes. Thank you. Um, okay, so this is the first effect. So here, this master fade, that's like your, um, um, what you call it, opacity slider. So I actually do that with this particular image. I went to, um, actually I did it when I got back to Photoshop, but you can also adjust it here. So I, that would be about what I did in Photoshop. So that would be the effect, um, or you can reset it to, let's go back. I did something wrong. <laughs> I moved the wrong slider, I think. So let's type that in again. Bits. In Bob's 033. All right, so this was the actual preset, and that was their um, master fade, was about there. There isn't a number, so it's just a matter of moving it. So I decided to take this back to Photoshop and then lower the opacity there, but you can absolutely do it here. So if you're using it as a standalone, you do still have that option there as well. Um, I'm just big on having my individual layers. So I brought it back to just see a little bit of color and have it be a very light pastel. Do you have a question, dear? Okay. Um, so I'm going to reduplicate it and go back in. We're going to do a different effect. So I sometimes like to do this and I also use this program to create textures or varieties for my texture. So a lot of the Sunday samplers, you'll see that I do one version and then there are other versions of the same texture. A lot of those I create with Smart Photo Editor. So it's a very cool way to take a photo of, I don't know, say brick or rust or something like that, and just take the texture in there and play around with some of the presets. And you can get some very cool results. So let's go back to our filter gallery and I'm going to do photo art at a click 028. And this one is similar but it's more of like a cartoony kind of effect. So with this one, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's hit OK. Um, with the circle, it kind of is controlling how much of the 
image has color and how much is more black and white. Um, and I really like this one. I, I just something about the the colors and the real kind of almost high key look that the drawing had. Um, I really like this one a lot. So we're going to take this one back over. And Sandy, when am I doing my course on making textures? I've been trying to get to working on it. I have an outline done. Um, I just keep getting busy with so many things, but I do plan to get that out soon. Hopefully this summer is my goal, Sandy. Thank you. Dave said, maybe next Christmas. <laughs> no, that that is one of my next projects. Um, so I lowered the opacity just a hair. and. Um, I think that was pretty cool. So you can see the difference in these two. This one is much more faded, more of a true black and white with just a hint of color. And then this one's just got that real kind of pop of color, which I really liked. And then I did one other thing. And this one was just to add a border to kind of tone down these images. There are some neat border effects in here. So let's go back in. And we'll close that one out, go to our effects gallery. And I used gritty frame. And happen to be two things with the colors and they're actually both pretty cool. I, I like the white one too, but I did go with the darker one and we'll say, okay. And you can adjust the, the fade here, or you could do it back in Photoshop if you're doing it that way. And then we can send that one back. And so you can see, I just, just did that border. So here was the original, and then all that change was just toning down those edges, which I, I liked that effect, it really made the truck stand out a little bit more. So they have three different things. And I mean, the possibilities are just endless. You could play with the same image forever. Yes, there is a border section that will take you into that. I'll show you that when we get back in there again. Um, so we can close that. And I got one more for you. And this is one of my favorite barns. I know some of you from our who have done my Barns and Backroads workshop or online today. So thanks for visiting us. We have one more coming up uh, starting on the 3rd. And then I have some spots open for the fall. Uh, so we're going to go back into graphics. This is a nice barn. I have this image hanging on the wall in our dining area. And I, it has a couple textures on it, the one that I did. I had at our last um, NECCC conference I was at up in New England, I had won a 20 by 30 metal print and that's what I had it printed on and it looks really nice there. Um, so we're gonna go to our effects gallery and here is the borders category. So you could do classic borders, vintage, contemporary. There's they, And the way these get labeled into these categories is when they're created, the person keywords, the sections that they think they're appropriate for. Uh, but you definitely have borders here. You also have moods. I mean, there's just so much kind of cool stuff. There's HDR, there's Boca, Hipster, tons and tons of different things that you can do. And in this one I did, I was looking to do kind of a, a real light watercolor type of a look. And that was the look. But I didn't want it quite like that. That kind of looks like infrared, which is kind of neat. Um, so this one I did play around with the fade because I wanted to have some color in there. And then I did a couple of other changes, highlights. I left the, brought the darks to zero. Did the merge. 
and that's it. I'll save and return. Yes, you can definitely, Kate, go down the rabbit hole with this program because <laughs> there are so many different looks in there that you can find, which is really cool. And again, if, if you want to adjust it even further, I could bring back a little bit more color. Um, so there was the original, which of course is nice, um, but just sometimes it's fun to play around with different looks. Um, I've done a bunch of different things on this barn over a couple of years since I've taken it. This one I, I took even before we were living here when we were down looking at properties and driving around. Um, but this is one of the stops on our tour, our uh, workshop. And uh, and that's my last image. Wow, I actually got through everything with minutes to spare for a change. Usually I'm rushing at the end. So let me throw up the discount slide for you guys. Um, and I definitely will check on that code. I don't know why it's not working. It should be. Um, and again, I'll, I'll put it in Thursday's blog um, to make sure that it's working properly. Do we have some questions? Oh, and Dave has um, done the drawing for the names. And our two winners are Cindy O'Brien and Sharon Sturgis. So if you want to... Um, Send me your email, or actually, I can look you up afterwards through the, um, the webinar. Um, but if you want to shoot me an email, and Hazel at Meredith Images, you both get a um, free entry to our virtual uh, conference in June, which is it's just a short four weeks away. Um, so hopefully you guys have checked that out, because we've got some great speakers coming up for you, lots of creative techniques. Um, so let's see if we have any other questions. What's that, dear? Uh, smudge settings. Ah, okay. Smudge settings in Photoshop. Let me reopen the parrot image. Yeah, I'll I'll work on that discount thing and see what's up because it. Um, I know th they are offering a 50% sale, but that's kind of like all the time because um, they've always been like $29. And I see now with, with their 50%, it's like $29.95. So I don't think that has anything to do with it. Um, it may affect the upgrade. Um, um, okay, so does this work in Elements? It is not a plugin for Elements, I don't believe. Let me see if I can find it. I believe it's only for Photoshop, the plugin version. Um, let's go back over here. And you can download a free trial as well if you guys want to try it out while you're waiting for the code. Um, let's go to the FAQs and see if that tells us. Buying and upgrading, installing plugins. Let's see, system requirements. Remove it. I'll have to check on that. I'm, oh, how do I Photoshop or another tool? Let's see. Hmm. I have a feeling it's only for the full Photoshop. I don't think it works with elements. And I think that would probably be because of a, the way a lot of the plugins are. Oh, El Martha says it is for elements. Okay. There you go. Somebody, somebody oh, somebody put a link up. Let's check look the link. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, let me copy it. It's always nice when everybody helps. There you go. Uh, updates. Hmm. I don't see it in here, but oh, there you go. As a plug into Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. So there you go. It does work on Elements. Yay! All right. I would, it doesn't say Affinity, so I'm assuming not. It only works with Photoshop. It doesn't mention any other programs, David. Um, so in that case, then you would just do the standalone version. 
Okay, smudge tool. Um, I really don't generally change anything. Um, you could lower the strength if you want it to. Let's try that. I've, I've never tried it, I think, at anything other than 100%. Um, yeah, so if you're really trying to move something over, so if you wanted to, you know, use this the way it's meant to be made and kind of distort something a little, then you could lower the strength of the effect for what I tend to do with it. Um, you would want it to be at 100%, so you could just smush something all the way over as far as you want to go. So I hope that helps. Um, I, I do have the latest version of, of the Smart Photo Editor. It actually did an update the other day. Um, so I do have the, the latest version. And let's see, anything else? Um, Phil, the recording will be available sometime tomorrow. You will get an email from the Zoom system in the afternoon with the link, and I'll also have it in the blog on Thursday. It'll be on my Meredith Images YouTube channel. Um, so that will be, I'll have it up sometime tomorrow morning after I finish, you know, tweaking it. Um, I think that's, we covered most of the questions, but I will definitely read through these again. Um, the link for the updates, I think that was the, I'm not sure if that's the one you're referring to. Um, so I thank you guys. Wow, we're actually right on time. How do, how do you like that? <laughs> So thanks for joining me. I hope you learned a little something about this program. If you haven't used it before, I think it's um, a really cool addition to your digital toolbox. And I am also doing a sale on all of my textures, brushes, and eBooks for the next week, 30% off with the code WEB14. Um, and that's till the end of June 1st. And then don't forget to grab your notes for the webinar and then you can follow along with the replay as well. They're five dollars um, until June 1st and then they're the regular price is now $7.50. Um, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks everybody for being here and I will talk to you again soon. I won't be doing a webinar next month because of the virtual conference um, but I will do one in July and I think the next one we're going to cover the Nick suite because um, I've been kind of featuring one specific software for the last couple of months by popular request. Um, so we will do that in July, and I hope to see you at our virtual conference next month too. Thanks, guys. Have a great evening. Take care.